Hey everyone, I hope you're doing good. Welcome to the Simple Learn channel and in this video, I present you some commonly asked C++ interview questions. These questions will help you in your preparation and serve you as a valuable resource while preparing for the interviews. In this video, we will cover some conceptual questions, multiple choice questions, output based questions and some programming questions of C++. So without further ado, Let's get started. Starting with the first question, that is what is the difference between C and C++? Now C language is a procedure oriented language, whereas C++ is partially object oriented language because it doesn't support object oriented features completely. C language supports top down approach and C++ supports a bottom up approach. Here the bottom up approach means the development of modules in C++ starts from the bottom. C doesn't support function or operator overloading whereas C++ supports both function and operator overloading. C language doesn't support virtual and friend function. C++ language supports both virtual and friend function. C language has 32 keywords whereas C++ has 52 keywords. Next question is what are classes and objects in C++? A class is a user defined data type that contains data members and member functions. It is defined with keyword class. Objects are defined as an instance of a class. Once the object is created then it can operate on both data members and member functions. Coming to the third question, that is, what are access modifiers? Access modifiers are used to define accessibility for the class members. It defines how the members of the class are accessed outside the class scope. There are three types of access modifiers, that is private, public and protected. Let's start with private. The members who are declared as private cannot be accessed directly from outside the class. They can only be accessed by the member functions inside the class. Now public. The members who are declared as public can be accessed from within the class as well as outside the class and even from outside the package as well. Now protected. The members who are declared as protected can be accessed from within the class and from the derived class. Now coming to the next question, that is, what is C++ OOPS concept? OOPS stands for Object Oriented Programming. There are some concepts of OOPS, that is, Object, Class, Inheritance, Polymorphism, Encapsulation, and Abstraction. Now let's understand these concepts. Let's start with Object. An object is a basic unit of object oriented programming. It can be defined as an instance of a class. We can create multiple objects of a class. Now class is a template of an object. It is user defined which holds member functions and data members. The data and code which is defined inside the class are said to be the members of the class. Now inheritance. Inheritance can be defined as a process in which child class inherits all the properties and behavior of its parent class. The class which is inherited is called the base class and the class which inherits is called the derived class. Now polymorphism. Polymorphism is the ability to give different meanings to the same function. It allows us to redefine a function and create it with a completely new definition. Now encapsulation. Encapsulation means binding code and data together into a single unit. Now abstraction. Data abstraction specifies hiding the internal details for the simplicity and showing the functionality to the user. Now coming to the next question, that is what is the difference between a while loop and a do while loop? So first is while loop. While loop verifies the condition. If it's true, then it iterates the loop till the condition becomes false. On the other side, do while loop first iterates the loop body once, then it checks for the condition. 
in while loop the syntax is while keyword then condition inside the brackets the syntax of do while loop is do block and after that while keyword with a condition in the while loop if the condition is false then not a single statement will execute inside the loop on the other hand in do while loop if the condition is false then also the body will execute once now coming to the sixth question that is what is a constructor a constructor can be defined as a member function that is invoked whenever we create an object it has the same name as that of class there are two types of constructors in c++ that is default constructor and parameterized constructor default constructor are those constructors which do not take any parameters if we don't define any constructor then the compiler will automatically provide a default constructor on the other hand parameterized constructor are those constructors in which we can pass the arguments now coming to the next question which of the following operator cannot be overloaded our options are a subtraction operator b addition operator c ternary operator and d modulo operator so our correct answer is c ternary operator because overloading this operator is not syntactically possible so let's move on to our next question write a program to find the factorial of a number so here we have to write a program of factorial in which we will enter a number and its factorial is displayed on the screen so here we have declared an integer n which we will take an input from the user and another variable fact which we have initialized as 1 after that we have displayed a message enter a positive integer and we have taken an input of the integer now if the number or integer entered by user is less than 0 that is in the negative then it will display error as there is no factorial of negative number and all the positive number will go to the else block inside the else block we have used for loop and it is iterating from 1 to n that is the number users had entered and inside the for loop it is written fact into equal to i which can also be written as fact equal to fact into i which means 1 by 1 all the numbers from 1 to n will be multiplied by fact variable and the result will be stored in the fact variable itself once the iteration is done then the fact variable where the result is stored is displayed so this is the factorial program now coming to the ninth question that is what is operator overloading operator overloading is a mechanism in which we provide an additional meaning to the operators in this an operator is overloaded to give user defined meaning for example we can overload an addition operator in a class like string to concatenate two strings by only using addition sign now a next question is what if we compile a program without the main function now another question arises is it possible to compile a program without the main function so the answer is yes we can compile a program without the main function but we cannot run or execute the program because the main function is the entry point from where all the execution begins and without the entry point the program is not executable so we can compile the program but we cannot run it without the main function now moving to the next question what is operator overloading and function overloading as we have already discussed operator overloading operator overloading allows operators to have an extended meaning apart from their predefined meaning function overloading on the other hand defines a method in such a way that there are multiple ways to call them now 
Our next question is what is the difference between equal to operator and assignment operator? The equal to operator checks whether two values are equal or not. If equal then it's true otherwise it will return false. The assignment operator on the other hand assigns the value of right variable to the left variable. Coming to the 13th question that is when void return type is used. Void return type is used when we don't want to return any value. It specifies that the function doesn't return a value. Function with void return type completes its task and then returns the control to the caller. So our next question is what is call by value and call by reference in C++. First of all both of these methods that is call by value and call by reference are the methods to pass the values to the functions. So let's start with the first method that is call by value method. In call by value method we pass the copies of actual parameters to the functions formal parameters. This means if there is any change in the values inside the function then that change will not affect the actual values. In call by reference method the reference or address of actual parameters is sent to the functions formal parameters. This means any change in the values inside the function will be reflected in the actual values because here we are sending the address of the values. Coming to the 15th question that is what is inline function? The inline function is expanded in line when it's called. When this function is called the whole code of inline function gets inserted or substituted at the inline function call. Or in other words the compiler replaces the function calling location with the definition of the inline function at compile time. Its syntax is the inline keyword, return type and function name and parameters inside the brackets. Coming to the next question that is what are pointers in C++? Pointers are the variables that holds the memory address of another variable. The type of variable must correspond with the type of pointer. For example the pointer of character type can hold the address of character type variable and the same goes for integer and other data types. Its syntax is type of variable and asterisk sign with the name of pointer. Moving to the next question that is what is scope resolution operator? A scope resolution operator is represented as shown. This operator is used to associate function definition to a particular class. This operator is used for the following purposes to access a global variable when we have a local variable with same name. Second is to define a function outside the class. Now moving to the next question and this question is output based question. So the question is what is the output of the following C++ program. So in this question we have to determine the output of the following program and we have to select the correct answer from the following options. So in this program as we can see two variables i and x are initialized as 0 and after that do block is there and we know that do block executes for once regardless of any condition and inside the do block there is if statement in which the condition is if i mode equal to 0 then only the block will execute. So if i is initially 0 and we know 0 mode 5 is 0 so the condition is satisfied and it will display 0 as the value of x. x is 0 initially after that the value is incremented for both i and x. Now the value of i is 1 and 1 mode 5 is 1 so it doesn't satisfy the condition. So the value of i will increment again and similarly the process will repeat for 2 mode 5, 3 mode 5, 4 mode 5 but 5 mode 5 is 0. So the value of x here which is 1 
now will be displayed and increments to 2. Then afterwards, i becomes 6, then 7, then 8, then 9 on incrementing, but doesn't meet the condition at that time. But when it becomes 10, the control will move outside the loop and 2 will be displayed. So our answer becomes 0, 1 and 2. So this is our answer 0, 1, 2. Now let's move on to the next question. So this question is a multiple choice question and in this question we have to determine the size of integer data type. So our options are 4 bytes, 1 byte, 8 bytes and 2 bytes. So our answer is 4 bytes. 4 bytes is the size of integer data type. So now let's move to the next question. This question is what is std in C++? First option is std is standard class in C++, std is standard file reading header in C++, std is a standard header file, then last option is std is standard namespace in C++. So our correct answer is std is a standard namespace in C++. It is used in programs while writing using namespace standards and it tells the compiler to take everything in standard namespace. So let's move on to the next question. So in this question we have to tell how to input a string in C++ with spaces. Now we all know how to input a string in C++ without spaces because it's quite easy. But let's understand how to do it with spaces. So in this question, as we can see, there is a string that we have declared s. The name of the string is s. After that, we have displayed a message, enter the sentence with spaces. And then we are taking the input. Here, get line is the member function of iStream class, which is used to read the string with spaces. So as we can see, get line, after that in the bracket, c in, which is used to take the input. After that, the name of the string, that is s. And after that, we have displayed the string name, that is s. So this is how we can take the input from the user with spaces using this getLine function. So let's move to our next question. That is, what is the difference between new and malloc? Now, both of these are used to allocate memory. So let's start with new. New is an operator whereas malloc is a function. The new operator calls the constructor. On the other hand, malloc function doesn't call the constructor. In case of new, there is no need to specify memory size while using new operator. In case of malloc, we have to specify the memory size in malloc function. New operator can be overloaded, whereas malloc function can never be overloaded. Now next question is, what is the difference between prefix and postfix? In prefix, first the value is incremented and then the value is assigned to the expression. But in case of postfix, the value is assigned to the expression and then the variable's value is incremented. Now coming to the next question, that is, what is the output of the below C++ program? So as we can see the program, this is the program of enumeration. As we can see the enum keyword. So here three enum variables are there that is blue, green and great. And we know that there are some default values that are assigned to the enum variables that starts from zero. But we also know that we can change these default values. So as you can see in this question, green equals five. So greens value is 5 and we can see the element great has no value so in enum if this case arises then the value of the next element would be 1 greater than its previous element so ultimately the value of great element would be 6 so as you can see here we have printed blue and great so our output would be 0 and 6 that means the value of blue is 0 and the value of great is 6. So now 
let's move on to the next question in this question we have to find the frequency of a number in C++ so as you can see in the program we have given this number 13324 and we have to find the frequency of the number 2 that is k equals to 2 k is the number so in this program first of all we'll pass both of these values to a function named frequency now inside that function we have declared a counter variable c and initialized it with 0 now after that we have used while loop and inside the while loop we have put the condition num greater than 0 now it means the loop will execute till the value of num is greater than 0 now after that inside the while loop we have put an if statement condition that is num mod 10 equals k now keep in mind that k is the number which we want to find the frequency of that is 2 now num mod 10 we know that any number when mod with 10 gives the last digit of that number so one by one all the digits of this num variable will be checked starting from 3 then 2 then 5 then 2 then again 2 then 4 similarly goes on so one by one all of these digits will be checked with the value of k that is 2 and if the digit matches with k then that counter variable which we have initialized as 0 will increment and after that num equals to num divided by 10 will delete that last element so that the repetition of digits don't occur so this is how we can find the frequency of a number in C++ so now let's move on to the next question which of the following statement is correct about the program given below this is again an output based question so let's have a look at the program and these are its options 7 14 0 and 1 so we have to select one out of it so in this program we can see a variable x is declared and a pointer p is there and we have assigned this value 7 to the variable x after that we are storing the memory location of x to this pointer p and at last we are displaying the output using the dereference operator as we know that if we want to display the value at an address then we use dereference operator so our output would be 7 as the value at that memory location is 7 now let's move on to the next question which of the following statement is correct about the program given below now in this question again we have to determine the output so let's have a look at the program as you can see there are three variables x y and z and we have initialized them 2 4 and 5 respectively and after that we are calling a function duplicate and we are passing the values but in this case we are passing the values as reference so this is the case of call by reference and we know in case of call by reference the actual value of the variable also changes so here in this question we are passing the values as reference to this function named duplicate now inside this function we can see that every variable each of these three variables is getting multiplied by 2 so in case of call by value there will be no change in the actual value but here we are not passing the arguments as call by value but we are passing it as call by reference so the changes will be reflected in the actual value so when 2 is multiplied by 2 it gives you 4 when 4 is multiplied by 2 is it will give you 8 and when 5 multiplied by 2 it will give you 10 so its output would be 4 8 and 10 now let's move on to the next question how to write a program to check if the number is palindrome or not so palindrome is a number that remains the same when its digits are reversed so here we have to write a program to check if the number is palindrome or not so before moving forward 
there are two things that you should keep in mind that if a number is mod by 10 that is number mod 10 it will give the last digit of that particular number for example if there is a number 123 then 123 mod 10 will give you 3 and if we divide that number by 10 then that will remove the last digit for example 123 divided by 10 will give you 12 as an answer so now let's have a look at this question inside the int main there are variables like num digit reverse and n and after that there is a message saying enter a positive number after that we are taking the input num and we are storing that num variable inside another variable that is n we'll talk about this later why we are storing this to another variable n now there's a do block inside the do block we can see digit equals num mod 10 now to understand this let us take an example as let us suppose the number to be 123 now num is that number and we know that 123 mod 10 equals to 3 that means the last digit of that number so now digit is storing the last digit of that number after that we can see reverse equals to reverse into 10 plus digit now we know that reverse we have initialized as 0 so reverse equal to 0 plus 3 now reverse now becomes equal to 3 after that we can see in the next line num equals to num divided by 10 that means 123 divided by 10 and as we have already discussed 123 divided by 10 will give you 12 now now this 12 will again go to num mode 10 and the value of digit now will become 2 now this 2 will be added in the second line as we can see and reverses 3 as we know now 3 into 10 becomes 30 plus digit which is now 2 that becomes 32 and after that line num equals to num divided by 10 will remove that 2 from the 12 so now the value of num is 1 now again the num will go to num mode 10 1 mod 10 gives you 1 so now the value of digit is 1 and in the next line reverse value is now 32 so 32 into 10 becomes 320 after that we will add the value of digit that is equal to 1 so it will become 320 plus 1 that will give you 321 so after that the condition of while loop terminates and after that we can see the reverse of the number is rev reverse because the result is stored at this variable now i'll tell you why we have stored num into the variable n because we don't want to make changes with the num variable that is the user input and here we have used if condition and inside the if condition all we have written is if the value that is entered by the user is equal to the reverse of that particular value then that number is a palindrome else the number is not a palindrome now coming to the next question which of the following will give the size of object or type so the right answer is the size of operator gives the size of object or type now let's move on to the next question which of the following is not a member of class so the answer is among the following friend function is not the member of a class now let's move on to the 31st question that is what is STL STL stands for standard template library it is a library container that provides generic classes and functions STL components are containers algorithms iterators and function objects so next question is what is a friend function a friend function can be defined as a function that can access private public and protected member of the class the friend function is declared using the friend keyword this function is declared inside the class now next is what is 
a copy constructor. A copy constructor is a member function that initializes an object using another object within the same class. The constructor is of two types, default copy constructor and user defined copy constructor. Now let's move on to the next question. How does the strings are stored in the memory? Options are sequence, null, non-contiguous, contiguous. So the correct answer is, the characters of strings are stored contiguously in the memory. Moving to the next question, what is inheritance? Inheritance is the mechanism in which we can create a new class that is child class from the existing class that is parent class. This child class is also known as derived class and the parent class is also called base class. And in the inheritance, child class inherits properties and behavior from its parent class. So our next question is, what is abstraction? Abstraction can be defined as a technique in which we only show the functionality to the user that is the details that we want the user to see and hiding the internal details or implementation details which is not necessary for a user to see. Now let's move on to our next question. What is the output of the below code? So here we can see they have used ternary operator in this question. So first of all, as we can see, there are three variables a, b and c and five and six are the values of a and b that have been assigned to them. And at line 11, we can see a greater than b, question mark a colon b. So this is a ternary operator. Here a greater than b is the test expression. If this test expression is true, then the expression after the question mark that is a will be the answer. and if it is false, then the expression after colon that is B will be the answer. That means if A is greater than B, then A will be the answer. And if A is not greater than B, then B will be the answer. And as you can see, the value of A is 5 and the value of B is 6. So the test expression is false. So that means B will be the answer. So now the value of C is B that is 6. So our correct answer is 6. Now let's move on to the next question. What among these is used to return the number of characters in the string? Option A is size, option B is length, C is both size and length and option D is name. So the answer is both size and length will return the number of characters in the string. Now let's move to the 39th question. What is the output of the below code? As we can see in this code, the value of j is 10. Then the value of j is incremented. As you can see in the line 10, j++. So the value of j is incremented to 11. After that, j is added to 100. And at last, j is added to 999, which will give us the result as 1010. That is 1010. And this value is being assigned to i. So our answer is 1010. 10. Now let's move to the next question that is the last question. Pick the correct statement about string objects in C++. Option A is string objects must be terminated by a null character. Option B is string objects have a static size. Option C is string objects have a dynamic size. Option D is String objects use extra memory than required. So our correct answer is C. String objects have dynamic size. They are dynamic in nature. That is their size varies as their value changes. So they don't use any extra memory. So these were some important C++ interview questions. Alright guys, with that we have come to the end of this session. I hope these interview questions will help you in your preparation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it helped you all. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. 
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.